My name is Jacksepticeye and welcome back to Detroit Become Human. Last time we did, was it Kara's thing that we did last? Why is this all blocked off? What? Reach the train safely. Oh. It's showing me stuff that I haven't even done yet. Look at all this chickens. Okay, moving on. Who are we going to get back Several to? Several sources report Let's that Psycholife has provided Detroit police with a prototype detective android. Although police assistant androids have been for several years. That's what Connor was watching in the police station. Okay. Marcus is coming to terms with a lot of things. Is Marcus our sonny? Is he gonna become like robot messiah? He does have a very hobo Jesus look about him right now. This place will be can be free. Find Jericho. Hmm. He impar he imparted the Ferndale on me. Check symbol. That square thing? Okay, look for the graffiti. There's graffiti everywhere! Ooh. But look at this! That's our symbol! They missed you. Did you some oh! I thought I had to look for the like the sign in it, not the actual um graffiti itself. I didn't shouldn't realize it was showing me the entire thing. Okay, big yellow one. Hey, okay, none of these. What's up, sir? Can I like spare him some credits? I know. Or something. Crazy, right? Oh yeah. yeah, sure. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Tech addict. I always like these books. It adds a lot. Cyberlife has unveiled a new quantum supercomputer capable of exaflops. I love that K-pop band. One billion billion operations per second, the equivalent of several human minds in a single machine. The computer was specifically designed to analyze vast data from various sources and generate predictions. Philip Seymour, or Seymour, Cyberlife's director of Futurology, is highly confident. We've been testing for a while and the results are going to wow people. The computer will be used to calculate the probability of mass extinction events, otherwise known as MEES. Such an aggressive alien in- such as aggressive alien invasions or global climate disasters like meteors or super viruses. Can you actually predict that? The computer can then help us to anticipate and prepare for such calamities, ensuring humanity is never caught off guard. Despite doomsday predictions from those fearful that AI is gaining too much influence already, many exports are exports are hailing this as a quantum leap in applied artificial intelligence. What if they build the computer and then it's like, yeah, you're already fucked, the computers are AIs are gonna kill you all. Um, half the planet is already like AIs running around doing their own thing. But you guys have no idea because they don't have the LEDs anymore. And you made them too good. No, 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 don't go back. I wanna go down. Android astronauts to explore IO. That's interesting stuff. NASA announced the launch of a five android crew to explore Io, one of Jupiter's satellites. The journey will last three years and is expected to teach us much about the formation of our solar system. Though not the first androids in space, this is the first all-machine crew, proving that androids are sufficiently reliable to be entrusted with the entire mission. Go to page two. Androids are an extraordinary asset for the conquest of space, said Michael Shelley, director of NASA. Cosmic radiation destroys human DNA. Humans suffer many effects from long-term space travel, while androids are immune to most of these issues. NASA confirmed no return journey was planned, and that the androids would work on Io for several months before being destroyed by the extreme conditions of the planet. That's another thing to think about as well, is that... If in this universe, they're equipped enough and capable enough to make these types of AI, then what's to say, like, what's inside your phone? Or what's inside a computer, or what's to... Like, what type of AIs are in the rest of the world? So, obviously, if technology is improved to the point where we're able to make androids, then obviously our space travel is going to be a lot better. Um, 
And the thing about androids is that, sure, the computational side of it is a really big factor, like, actually getting the processing done and getting AIs to look human and sound human and interact with everything. That's a very complicated task to do. But one of the bigger factors is power sources. The reason we don't have like nano armors and like Iron Man suits and exoskeletons for the military and all that kind of stuff is that it's just impossible to power that shit. At least efficiently, without weighing it down. Also, it worries me that in this universe, that the androids, it doesn't take a whole lot for them to become deviants, and once they're deviants... Oh, sorry. Hey! Excuse me. Oh. Wait a minute. He said sorry and excuse me, treated me like a person because he didn't know I was an android. Interesting. But yeah, it's worrisome that androids can just flip on a switch like that. Like Marcus, it didn't take a whole lot for him to suddenly become rogue. Do you know where Jericho is? Thanks. Um, I know the graffiti is right next to me, but I'm trying to just look around. It's here. Uh, there's one. There's another one up here. Boom, baby! Clue updated. Follow the clue. Grandma says it leaves her with nothing too sweet. But she's so cool. Aw, oh, they're talking about an android. I was able to sprint there for a second. Ow! Oh. Sprint. I'm able to jog around. I want to see how far I can explore. I want to take Marcus out in the road, open up his bad boy wings. Oh, can't go that way. Surveillance drone operating on these premises. That's also another thing, is that... Right now, CCTV is everywhere already. You're always being watched. Almost everywhere you go. If not physically, then digitally. Like, your footprint is everywhere. You're... You can't hide in today's society. It's literally impossible. Um, you're bound to be leaving some sort of trail somewhere. But, the thing about that is that now, like, cameras are everywhere looking at you no matter where you go. But nobody really cares because they're not really doing anything. It's when drones start coming in that everyone's made more aware of how many there are around. Like, you're kind of made aware of how many cameras are actually around because they're making noise and they're more intrusive. Sorry, don't run me down! I'm a nice robot man! Okay, it's over here. We do it all. Do you? Do you really? Antic games! Oh, I shut down. Nobody plays video games in this future. There it is. Oh, wait, there's a second one? Uh huh. Got such a raging clue. I also feel like I've had to sneeze since this episode started and it's not coming out. <laughs> This also looks like the exact same area- well, I mean, it is all Detroit. I was gonna say, it looks like the exact same area that Kara and them were just in. Okay, I have to search for little robot men. Not really seeing him around, man. If there's robot men around, I can't see him. Ah, <laughs> not today, disco lady. All right. My robot boys are somewhere else. Ah, oh, just let me cross the street for fuck's sake. Red light! Green light! <laughs> it happened right as I said it. Awesome! I can predict the future. Oh, look at those boys playing. Turns out they're just throwing rocks at each other. Damn it! Oh! <laughs> I'm drinking a frothy coffee.
Man, future cop cars have weird sirens. I think I've already passed the area I'm supposed to be in, but it's nice to explore. Okay. Whole system almost broke there, that's fine, just keep going. Power through. This is the robot boys I'm looking for, right? Oh, beside a fence. I just saw a fence. Hello, fellow humans! It is I, RK400. I mean, Maracuse. <laughs> Can you cash? Nah, sorry. Robot boys! There's one on his belly. And there's one in the other guy's chest! I see it, you can't hide from me. Oh, can I not scan that from here? <laughs> it looks like it's doing that. Is that really the one, and I just can't get to it right now? There's one, like, right there. Oh. They'll never suspect me in broad daylight. Plus, would they really care? You just look like... an urban explorer. Get out of here, you damn pallet! Oh wait, wrong one! <laughs> oh... Okay, next to a big giant face that doesn't feel so good. Okay. Got it. Anything down here worth looking at? Can I hide in the dumpster? That's really where I belong. There it is. Oh, badass shark man! All around me are familiar faces. Where's the last one? Find a way to reach the roof. Ah, oh, okay. I can use the bin! I can show you the trash! Shining, shimmering, splendid! Huh. Oh! I'm sorry, watchdogs who? Sparkle! No, don't get down yet. Ooh. How hardcore are you, Marcus? How hardcore? Can you parkour? Oh, reconstruction. Oh, am I gonna wall run? What's the probability? Am I- am I allowed to- oh, we're doing it. Marcus, I'm so glad you're free from mankind's oppression. Because now you're badass. You can do what you want, fly where you want, kill who you want. I mean, what? Sparkle City. Sparkle City, bitch. I see three of them already. One of them hiding in the same colors. God, this is such a long-winded way to get to where I'm going. I don't even know who Jericho is. Wow. Okay. I could hop up there. Or I could do some sort of like parkour backflip on this one. That's not that cool. Would be too unstable! Thank you, computer brain! You saved my marriage. Okay, let's go all the way back. 
Can I just exit out? Okay, what if I go this way? Like a spry cat, man. Would not be solid enough. Okay. Are these the only two options? Okay, well I guess I'm going this way. Now that's a good start. Ha ha ha! Yes! I'm sorry, Marcus, I only know Batman would be too high. Nah. You just don't got the stones to make the jump, man. Ah, oh, sweet! Now, run simulation! I like how it basically shows it to you, and then it shows it to you. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't do that whole, like... Because after seeing something like that, the the urge to want to do, like... <sighs> or something would be probably really high. And I'm glad that they don't do that. It was the same with the jogging guy at the start. Because they're androids. They're obviously not going to need breath. Okay, what's the next one I need? There it is. Wait, it is this, isn't it? Oh, maybe I have to line it up. That's literally it. There's the giant symbol! Got it! The other side of this? Okay, can you move in that direction? Alright, yeah, I can't move at all! Oh, there's a dead person in here. Oh, it's an android. What happened to him? Is that Jericho? Ah, oh, he's dead. Oh, I just had to do this. I thought I had to go around and look at it from the other side or something. Silly me. Ooh, Jericho was the sunlight. Jericho is a boat. It's a thing, not a person. Well, a person is a thing. They're all nouns, but... I see. The plot. She thickens like a good soup. Something that way and something that way. Wait, I don't want to go up there. Unless you're gonna collapse or something. <laughs> oh! Gotcha! Don't follow the death trail. Oh, this scared the shit out of me. <laughs> are, are, are you okay? <laughs> I've also seen a lot of talk about some of my decisions in this game. Um, which, I mean, I expect it because it's, it's one of those types of games that I'm never going to get the decisions right all the time. 
or right. There's no right or wrong decisions. You just play the way you play. The decisions I get are my decisions. They're what I do in the spur of the moment. I do have some issues with the way the game sets up the choices and the way it contextualizes them and the way it portrays them and everything. I'll get to that eventually. That's like a game design thing that I want to talk about. But um, anything that goes wrong or goes right or goes sideways or goes indifferent, it's just the way it is. Let's just live with it and go with it. And I know I'm slightly later to the game than other people, so a lot of you know exactly how the game goes by now. You know what happens, you know what's supposed to happen, you know the ins and outs, all the story and everything. I literally have no idea. I'm playing it for the first time, so I'm going in blind to a lot of these things. So if I don't get things in the first go, that's fine. We'll get the path that we get. And then at the end, we might be able to go back and see all the different eventualities. Because I'm very, very curious. Normally, I don't do that. So I'm like, well, my story is my story. But this has a lot of twists and turns, and I'm, I'm very curious to see how different outcomes play out. So let's just have fun with it on the first go. Let's feel some feelings. Wow. That's gorgeous. Oh god, Marcus. Oh god, uh, don't look down. Shrek! I'm looking down! Is this gonna be a ship full of androids? What? Oh, Marcus. You lost your trendy jacket. I really like that. It made me look like Neo. Hello. Housekeeping. Did say find a way to see, and this is a flashlight, so. Oh my god. <laughs> Sound design in this game is really, really good. As you know, that's the stuff I'm a sucker for. Okay, there's that door, there's this way. Really, you can't open that. You're a strong android man. Use the power of robotics. I'm sorry. I was just I was sticking around, man. Now it's Detroit become scared. Jericho become scared. The sequel. I'm guessing all of these are locked. We're being very loud. There's nothing in here. Except RA9. RA9, RA9, RA9. Is that another android? Hmm, blocked path. Open path! Go! <laughs> nope! That was an android lady, right? Ooh. Well, Marcus, there's absolutely no way back now. Oh, 
this sucks. <laughs> this place is horrible. Put me back in Detroit, please. Well, we're still in Detroit. You know what I mean. Marcus, I know you're a freaking robot. And you don't get scared, but I'm very scared! You okay? Did you break your synthetic spine? Oh god! Welcome to Jericho. That's a Daniel! Huh! That guy is the same model as Daniel! What did I miss? Oh, just another option to cross the gap. I like those ones. Okay. What is Jericho? Oh, are we with my boy again? Oh, Con Con and Hank Man. My two favorite duos. Uh, my, my favorite duo. Not my Reconcile with Lieutenant Anderson. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out, I'm, in my head I'm trying to game the system all the time, and like, I, I want to go through my thought process for some of the things, like when Connor got shot that time, like in my head I was like, okay, and I didn't even realize at the time that the stress level was supposed to go up, because they had said stress level is high means the robot's going to self-destruct, and I need information out of him, so I thought I was supposed to keep the stress level low, and I didn't even realize it said too low. And I was supposed to get it higher, and it was red and everything, and to me, stress levels are like, they're always supposed to be kept low. Especially in a tense situation, so I was like, okay, I, I should keep it low, and I didn't even read what was supposed to happen, that's on me. And then afterwards it was like, give up or intervene, and I didn't want to give up, because I thought, giving up is failure. Like, in, in the context of a game, giving up usually means you fail that section, you give up on that section. I was like, okay, I don't want to give up. I'll, uh, intervene because I'm an android and who can stop an android bashing its head in but an android So that was my thought process. I ended up messing it up, but that's what went on in my head. Good god. Look how pretty this is The lighting is astounding The reflections are nice The shaders are really nice The materials are really nice good job Chicken feed. So in my head, I'm trying to game the system. And like, how does the game prioritize options what and choices? What is your problem? Don't you ever do as you're told? Look, you don't have to follow me around like a poodle. But I like you. <sighs> uh, apologize for behavior. I'm sorry for my behavior back at the police station. I didn't mean to be unpleasant. Oh, wow. You've even got a brown nose and apology program. <laughs> As it's Cyberlife thought everything, huh? Just Here guys being dudes. A hamburger. 1680 calories. Carbohydrates, water, salt. Okay, cool. An XL soda, 710 calories. Hanky boy! You're about to consume almost your entire thing. Ooh, it's pineapple passion though. Go for it, Hank! Okay. I don't know why I'm scanning Hank again. I know Hank. Hank's my buddy. Gary Kays. Criminal record, resisting arrest, breach of hygiene regulations. Uh, they don't have Visa, they have Viva, and Detroit card. <laughs> uh, anything else I can scan a -roo? I think that's the whole job lot. Oh, I 
Thanks, Gary. I'm starving. Hmm. I'll leave that thing here. Huh. Not a chance. Follows me everywhere. Because I like you! Hank, be nice to me. We're buddies. We're bros. I would like one American cheeseburger, please. While I watch the hockey game. See? <laughs> Cholesterol? Your meal contains 1.4 times the recommended daily intake of calories and twice the cholesterol level. You shouldn't eat that. <laughs> Everybody's gotta die of something. Yeah, you fucking eat it, Hank. Don't let that android tell you. Even though, Connor, I love you, but. Habit? Do you eat here often? Most days. Gary makes the best burger in Detroit. Is there anything you'd like to know about me? Hell no. Well, yeah. Um, why do they make you look so goofy and give you that weird voice? <laughs> Cyberlife androids are designed to work harmoniously with humans. Both my appearance and voice were specifically designed to facilitate my integration. Well, they fucked up. <laughs> oh, poor Connor. Connor, I think you're great. Can I ask you a personal question, Lieutenant? Why do you hate androids so much? I have my reasons. He lost somebody to an android, didn't he? Maybe I should tell you what we know about deviants. You read my mind. Proceed. We believe that a mutation occurs in the software of some androids, which can lead to them emulating a human emotion. In English, please. They don't really feel emotions. They just get overwhelmed by irrational instructions, which can lead to unpredictable behavior. Huh. Emotions always screw everything up. The androids aren't as different from us as we thought. <laughs> you ever dealt with deviants before? <laughs> yeah. I've had my fair share. A few months back. A deviant was threatening to jump off the roof with the little girl. I wonder if that's the same Daniel, then. I managed to save her. So I guess you've done all your homework, right? Know everything there is to know about me? Yeah? I know you graduated top of your class. You made a name for yourself in several cases and became the youngest lieutenant in Detroit. Go, Hank! I also know you've received several disciplinary warnings in recent years, and you spend a lot of time in bars. So what's your conclusion? Sincere psychological call. I'll be sincere. I think working with an officer with personal issues is an added challenge. <laughs> but adapting to human unpredictability is one of my features. I just got a report of a suspected oh. deviant. It's a few blocks away. We should go have a look. I'll let you finish your meal. I'll be in the car if you need me. Hey, Wait. Connor. You run out of batteries or oh. what? I'm sorry. I was making a report to Cyberlife. Uh. Well, do you plan on staying in the elevator? No. I'm coming. Making a report to Cyberlife. Is that what he was doing when he was talking to Amanda? What do I know about this guy? Not much. Hmm. Just that a neighbor reported that he heard strange. Okay. B. Noise thorough. coming from this floor. Nobody's supposed to be living here, but. The neighbor said he saw a man hiding an LED under his cap. Oh, Christ. If we have to investigate every time somebody hears a strange noise, we're gonna need more cops. Just hire more androids. Hey, were you really making a report back there in the elevator? Just by closing your eyes? Correct. Shit. <laughs> Wish I could... Okay. Pigeon feathers. Do that. You can, Hank! Report in your mind's eye. Just go to your mind palace. Like Sherlock. Okay. 
Question the subject. You ready, Hank? Let's do it! Hello? It's me! Android Connor! Anybody home? Open up! Detroit Police! Stay behind me. Got it. I love these guys, they're so cute. Okay, Hank, be careful. I don't want you getting shot. Oh, Connor's rubbing his hands together. I thought he was going in like this. <laughs> Stick him up, robbers! I've got a gun! What if he did that? His fingertips just came off and then he had guns underneath. Ooh. Okay, I know we're chasing bad guys and everything. I'm gonna read a book real quick. Red Ice Epidemic. Okay. This is- Because this is my theory that- Didn't it say that Red Ice also has Therium in it? And Therium is the blue synthetic blood that runs through the android. So what if they're interacting with each other and people who take Therium or take red ice are messing up the android circuitry or something like that. I don't know. The synthetic stimulant, informally known as red ice, has become the drug of choice for Detroit's growing underclass. Analysts have, po ah. Analysts have pointed to Detroit's status as the epicenter of android production, suggesting the drug flourishes in the dissatisfaction caused by androids taking human jobs. Sociologist Dr. Julian Carter has drawn the same link with androids. As Cyberlife's androids spread across the country, they will bring red ice with them. Poor men and women, desperate to make ends meet, are vulnerable to become users or even dealers. Not only is the popularity of this drug spreading rapidly, but its chemical composition is uniquely dangerous. Therium, the main ingredient in Android Blue Blood, is among the active agents in red ice and has a highly destabilizing effect on hormone production. Bing bang bong. Uh, the National Association of Narcotic Prevention say the problem is going to get worse. The purity of ingredients is very low and deteriorating. America's biggest narcotics industry is only likely to grow. Red ice dealers are reported to have an unofficial motto. Where the blood is blue, the ice is red. And the money is green. It's actually pretty good. So even they're pointing out that there's a correlation between it. Past the tipping point. Environmentalists have long warned us about a tipping point, the moment at which global warming reaches a level that is irreversible. Scientists are now saying we have officially passed it. Global rainforests have been reduced by 79% since 2000, and coastal corals by 58%. Jesus. That's scary. Polar ice has melted to such an extent that rising sea levels have many states struggling to keep the water out of their coastal towns. With these cooling factors so diminished, there is now too much carbon in the atmosphere for the environment to ever absorb. Yikes. Global warming's scary, man. Is it just me or that these symbols look like the stuff from the Dharma Initiative from Lost? It's a little easter egg. I would love that. I love Lost. Okay, go Hank. Wait, what about this room? What the fuck is this? Pigeon coop. Oh my god, there's so many pigeons. Uh, Holy crap. Jesus, this place stinks. <laughs> Jesus. Well, looks like we came for nothing. We didn't come for nothing. Look at all these burbs. Our man's gone. We can hang out with the pigeons all day. Urban farms of Detroit. Fields in the heart of the city. 265 acre. Okay. Why is that relevant to us? Oh, it's hiding something. Okay, can I back out of this? I, like, I don't want to do these things. I'm trying to, like, back out and explore the rest of the place. Okay, here's a lot of the ciphers and stuff. Found something? I don't know. 
correct answer is yes, because you technically did find something. It looks like a notebook, but it's indecipherable. Oh my god, so many pigeons. Little pidge, little pidge, let me in. Okay. Am I getting out of my way there, Hank? Thank you. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Because he plays Mr. Krabs in SpongeBob. That was the joke. I'm very clever. Ah. They're all out of food! Suspect doesn't eat, or suspect ate everything. Oh my god, there's- those drawings are all over the wall. But they're too perfectly drawn, so- Jesus, I hate these things! That sounded a lot like Mr. Krabs. So an android lived here. Military jacket. RT. Probably initials. He put his initials in his jacket? That's something your mom does when you're in first grade. <laughs> Rupert Travis. The driver's license is fake. Cool. At least we didn't come for nothing. I never come for nothing. Get off there, Pidge! Don't let Hank see you. Hank doesn't like it when I touch the thing. Blue blood, huh? Bird seed. I can't believe it. <gasps> he took out his things. Not job. Its LED is in the sink. Not surprised it was an android. No human could live with all these fucking pigeons. <laughs> There's the RA9 again. That was also at the Jericho location. So, uh, am I the only one mildly concerned by the fact that the androids are just able to take out their LED and that's it? Then they just look Any human? Any idea what it means? RA9. Written 2,471 times. Quick it's maths. The same sign Ortiz's android wrote on the shower wall. Oh. Why are they obsessed with this sign? Looks like mazes or something. Obsessive compulsive writing. Okay, hold on a minute. See if there's anything else to find around here. Sorry, pigeons. But I have a job to do. Find cause of loud noise. Okay. Oh, the pigeon's merging with me. It makes it look like I have a wing. Do I get to reconstruct something? Wooden stool. Got it. That must have been very hard to pass. <laughs> Wait, where's the next clue? Aha. Uh -huh. And a marker. Still wet, used recently. Fell off. Suspect ran to the living room. Oh, that was the loud noise then. Him actually falling off the chair. So he was here like two seconds ago. Ooh, little, little, little. I love Connor section of this game. I want Connor section to be the only section. Though I guess we get a fuller story the other way, but you know what I mean. Recent skid marks. Metal hook recently broken. So he hit it on his way out. Is 
Seems that way, Johnny. Suspects heard us enter. Ah! Secret hidey hole, man! Again! Music is so good! Ah. Jesus! God damn Get him, fucking Hank. pigeons! What are you waiting for? Chase it! Come on it! Oh, pigeons! Lend me strength! Oh, God. Oh. You're not gonna run away from Connor! He's got the power of God and Jack on his side! Oh, this is dope! Oh. Fast but risky, easy but slow. Okay, fast but risky! That's my motto! Fast but risky! Always fast but risky! <laughs> Direct and crowded, safer detour. Okay. Okay, I don't want to hop anything, it's going to slow me down. Dude, this is fun! Go, Connor! You fucking badass! Oh, God. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, go this way! Into the lavender! Direct but slow, fast but risky. Fast but risky! That's the name of this episode! <laughs> I'm not gonna call you Connor anymore, I'm just gonna call you fast but risky. Fucking flawless! Send me in, coach! Oh, shit. I'm ready for nationals! Hey, be careful! This is really cool! Cutter's a beast! So direct but crowded. Direct but crowded! Look out! I don't know what I'm doing! Everything's scary and I don't know. Chase him, chase him down. He can't get far. Uh-oh. He ran into the corn! I'll never find him now. There he is! Chance of survival, 89%. Oh, fuck! Hank, you got this! Uh-oh! Oh, please don't tell me I fucked up Hank! 89% is a high chance of survival! But I might have fucked up my relationship with him. I've done nothing wrong. I just wanted to be free. You know what they'll do to me if you turn me in. Model 87400-961. Serious malfunctions have been detected in your software, including class 4 errors. You've been deemed defective, and will be sent back to Cyberlife for deactivation. Hey, Hank. Don't you fucking move. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry! Uh, you saw I was gonna fall, and you'd rather let me die than fail your fucking mission! I had to make a choice. It seemed to me. What am I to you? A statistic? I'm sorry. A zero, a one in your fucking program? Huh? Is that how you see humans, you bastard? Jesus. I understand you're upset. Perhaps I didn't assess the Fuck situation. you and your fucking assessment. Come here. Why are you doing this? You should have saved Hank. You're one of us. Shut up. You're helping humans. You're just their slave. I said, shut up! All right. Come along. All right, now you see me. Hey, what the fuck? Holy shit. Fucking Andrew. 
Oh, I didn't think. I should have. <sighs> Fuck! I should have saved Hank because he didn't like androids to begin with. Rupert committed suicide. See, and this is the thing, because I don't know where this story is going, so I don't know what the best path forward is. I don't know what the outcome for Connor should be. But that, that was a good s situation, because in that moment, you become the android. You become that statistical analysis kind of person, and that's where video games are very good at this. Because, like, one of the pathways in... What remains of Edith Finch, it puts you in that scenario of what it's like to be that character in that moment. And in that moment, I became more android than I was human, basically, because I was going through gameplay statistics in my head rather than thinking about what the story had to be at that moment. That's very, very clever. I want to figure out who this RA9 is. Because he said RA9 saved me, so clearly he's like a Jesus character to them. Who are you? Or a messiah. Fugitives. Just like you. My name is Josh. I'm Simon. North. Not Daniel. Uh, Jericho? This is Jericho? It's a refuge for those who don't want to be slaves anymore. And you knew that only an android could follow the trail, didn't you? Only those who are like us can find Jericho. If you could decipher the signs, it's because one of us trusted you enough to give you the key. There's a place where we can be free. Find Jericho. Uh, what? How many are you? There are 19 of us still in working order. The rest were damaged escaping their masters. Many tried to reach Jericho. If you succeed, humans have little pity for our kind. I understand how you feel, but we have more freedom here than you ever did. Um... Maybe I was never really free. Maybe I was only what my master wanted me to be. And now, I need to decide who I really am. You're lost. Just like the rest of us. We didn't ask for this. All we can do now is deal with it. I never asked for this. You're safe here. You can stay with us as long as you want. Go and huh. see Lucy. She might be able to help you. Oh, Lucy. Settlin, find Lucy, explore Jericho. Can I talk to my boys? Start fire? <laughs> Explode place. I'm assuming they start fire like... Everyone, gather round, and I'll tell you a story. Did I just have a lighter? Explore this place. This place is interesting. What happens if I light fires all over the place? I accidentally burned the whole ship down. At least if I light the fires, I'll be able to see. I've heard humans are afraid of dying too. Do you know what happens after death? Big question. No. No, I don't. Well, I'm about to find out. What's your name? Marcus. I was glad to meet you, Marcus. Yeah, creepy.
a very impressive visual effect on the hands. I wonder how they do that. This is the next guy you can talk to. Oh no. Ah, oh, dead child android. I don't want to see this. Threw him out when they didn't want him anymore. He was living on the streets before we brought him here. They'll all shut down if we don't find a way to help them. To help them, we need blue blood and bio components. We salvage what we can from those who shut down. But there's never enough. So, how do they survive? They won't. We're slowly dying out. Why do you all still have your LEDs in? Oh, It's a little helper man. We didn't start the fire! I'm still upset that I didn't save Hank. <laughs> RA9 again. That's cool, she's processing something. Oh. Cyberlife Warehouse and Docks, West Torrance Avenue, Detroit, Michigan. Very creepy about it. Oh, just hanging around. Not really saying anything to each other, not really doing anything with anyone. Can I talk to the Simon guy? Nope. This guy's dying as well. Hey, buddy. He's 420 on him. Not in very good shape, am I? My diagnostic program isn't working. <laughs> I don't think you would have anything good to say anyway. What happened to you? They tied me to the back of a car. Oof. I think they wanted to have fun. I don't want to shut down. No. I don't want to shut down. That's sad. My poor little robot babies. Lucy? Oh, she got no head. Are you Lucy? Oh, that's creepy. Sit down. <laughs> okay. Show me. Show you what? Oh. I'll stop the bleeding. Oh, I'm okay, actually. Got you don't feel pain. Do 
drink this? Is it really that easy? Ah, power aid. Give me your hand. You had it all, and you lost it all. You've seen hell, and now hell lives in you. Your heart is troubled. A part of shadow and a part of light. Which will prevail? Your choices will shape our destiny. Thank you. Um, it just occurred to me as well that, like, everyone's like prophesizing and like being oracles and all this kind of thing. And it just occurred to me that we read the Cyberlife Digest, whatever, and I talked about the supercomputer and how it's going to be able to do billion of billion computational stuff. What if one of the androids had that kind of stuff in them? If they were able to do that? Because it talked about being able to predict outcomes and then how to prevent them and things like that. So what if, like, Connor is one of those- that's why he's a prototype. It said that Marcus was a prototype as well. So what if he's like a supercomputer android? And he's able to do that kind of stuff. And then to all the others, he's gonna seem like a messiah. I just like theorizing. What's up, Simo? Simon. I know where we can find spare parts. Cyberlife warehouses in Detroit Harbor. They have everything we need. The docks are guarded. We can't just walk in there and take what we want. Humans will never let us. Which is why we won't ask permission. We don't have any weapons. And even if we did, none of us knows how to fight. We can steal what we need without fighting. We'll just get ourselves killed. Maybe. But it's better than waiting here to be shut down. I'm with you. Thank you, North. Maybe it's worth a try. Man. God, those character models are so good. It's a shame that sometimes the the lip syncing lets it down. Talk to Android, talk to Josh. I miss talking to someone. Man, no matter how hard I try, I still miss something. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna leave this episode here. That was a good one. I like that. There's a lot of stuff that seems like it's gonna start coming together and stuff that's gonna work its way out. Um and again, like, the- the Hank android thing, in my head it was like, Amanda told me to finish the mission. Go get the robot. Hank's gonna survive. But in- like, because it makes me choose so quickly, I never even think about, oh yeah, shit. Hank doesn't like androids. If I save him, he might trust us a bit more. Missed opportunity. I'm gonna bond with Hank, okay? He's my boy, Connor and Hank, my two dudes. Just two guys being dudes. Um, really, really like this game so far, though. And I'm already in my head like, oh, I can't wait to go back and figure out how this situation can play out. I can't wait to figure out all these different things. It's gonna be so much fun. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, punch the like button in the face! Like a pause! And, I guys all out. Thank you guys, and I will see all you dudes in the next video! Blessed be RA9! Whatever it is.